Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, designer for the model, uh, Natural History Museum in Los Angeles. I've done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos. Uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there. Okay, this is uh, a watercolor I'm working on right now. Um, now, I'm going to explain how to do the sky because it's kind of one of those things I've kind of done it on a previous video. But I'm just going to explain it. What, what you want to do is, if you have a, a sheet of paper this big, what you want to do is you want to get some blue tape and put it in a cross formation so you have four separate little paintings now what i would do is i would do the whole thing in this light ultramarine <clears throat> blue everywhere and what i would start with after i get all the blue and it's still wet then i would <clears throat> get the orange and, and you're going to treat each one of them as a separate little painting. This is just a practice thing. So in other words, you would be doing something like this big. Um, and you just change the brushes. So if you're doing a big one like this, I'd be using a brush about this big. If I'm going to do them in separate little ones, I'd be using a brush this big. Um, so it, it you could do the same strokes, it's just the brush size will be different. Anyway, so this is kind of just after you have all the blue in all of them, and this is your practice to see how things work out. I would just, with your brush kind of dipped in the orange, I would just do some random little scribbles going horizontal things. When you get down here at the bottom, kind of leave some blue coming in um, and, you know, leave, if you want, kind of like a sunset where it's bright, it's, you could leave a little lighter here. But you want to keep it moving fluid. While it's still wet, then you want to come with a Payne's Gray. Now, I did this on the top here darker and just kind of went back and I got close to some of these orange and just let them blend in naturally. You know, right here I came into the orange and just let it seep in. Made a darker spot in here. Got close to that orange, kind of just came in. When I got down to this bottom quarter here, I didn't use any of the... Payne's gray. So you can see, you know, I let paper come through here and kind of, you know, the blue come through here, little things, let things bleed in. And if you keep it loose and fast, it'll look more natural. Same thing with the bottom. I just put a few orange spots here and there and um, blended it in with the Payne's gray you know, I, I need some more work here, you know, just kind of blend it. So you can see maybe some branches and things on there. Um, I left this a little bit lighter because it's closer to that bright light. Um, I use tissue paper uh, to do the cactus. So I can make multiples or I can change them up. So here's kind of the thing. So I can move it over here. I can flip it upside down, make it go different directions. I could do all the work here and then darken the back. On the other flip side <clears throat> go over the top and it'll transfer over lightly if uh, I want to just I like them flipped all I have to do is flip them over the other direction go over this it'll transfer them over so that's kind of what I did with you know a few of these the other ones I just did by hand because uh, they were small and without detail now I wanted to make a night scene so what I used is a very dark green um, so I just went over so it looks like a night scene. And if I click on this a little bit uh, more and I'm going to do that.
you're going to see little lines in there. So I went into the green and added a little bit more Payne's Gray. Um, and the reason for that is... As you can see the little lines. Now, if I, if I do a detailed one of these, I'll put every little spike and thorn in there and really work the things in super detail. But since um, it's a night scene, I wouldn't be getting that kind of uh, reaction. But hopefully you can see these things. I can't really tell. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, now this is not a wet brush, it's damp. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit of a highlight. And you can see I'm just slowly building it up. Maybe I'll stop right there. Oops, that's too much. Just blend it. And I'd be doing that with all of them. I'm just going to do it on the left side. Kind of indicating that the sunlight is catching a little bit of the light on this side. And then just blend it out. And I'm calling this one my friend Mickey. And I'll, you can see what I'm talking about here. Now, if you pull the color out and it goes to orange, you can still come back in there with a little bit of yellow or a little bit of orange and blend it out. So I'm going to come back in here and try to blend out even more. So there's almost like layers of highlights. I don't know if you can see this. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. That's going to be a very dark area. So I'm just going to probably stop right there and come in here. And I'm going to do this with all of them. Maybe not so much on the little teeny ones. And you can see, just taking my time, just pulling. I'm not going to go all the way to the top because that this one right here will be casting a shadow underneath. Again, I am from, well, now I'm from New Mexico. And... Um, Saguaro or stovepipe cactus do not grow in New Mexico. They only grow in Arizona. Now that will kind of give this thing a little bit more, a little touch of realism or just spice it up a little bit and it's kind of putting definition from the clouds in the background now it makes a good separation and hopefully you can see the little teeny lines in the the cactus And now you can see the separation from the clouds in the background. And, let me see. and again, um, and, and I have to keep saying, this is the way I paint. Um, and it doesn't mean you need to paint like me. Because um, 
um, I'm, I'm just trying to give the opportunity to some people, and you could even add a little bit of an orange because there would be a little bit of an orange reflect in there, but um, you, know, you could move that around. Again, I'm just going to blend a little bit so it's not a stripy looking thing. You can see it, it, it just helps a little bit, just, just a little bit more, you know, just to kick it up a notch or two. Um, now, the reason I'm doing these demonstrations is not to convince you that you need to paint like me. My, I'm a teacher now instead of uh, a museum guy. And um, this is the way I would be teaching my students um, in my elementary, well, no, middle school class. I'm just blending it out. Um, now, I would probably be teaching my advanced students this, just the everyday, you know, students that have never had me before. I have a lot of steps um, that they need to go through before I show them some of these techniques because you got to start from the beginning. You just can't start at the end. Um, so I have a lot of tricks and techniques and kind of do little projects that will kind of lead up to this. So it's a little piece of this technique, uh, not the full thing. Now, my advanced students have had me for a while. I don't have any problem you know, showing them the, these techniques because I know I've seen some really extraordinary little things from them. Anyway, um, I'm not going to go too much further. Um, I just wanted to give you an idea another direction. Now, what I what I said in some other videos, and I'm going to probably hold off on doing videos for a while, um, but I'm just, just going to do them right now and just not make them public. Maybe sometime later. Now, I'm doing this for the people that were like me in, in middle school and high school. Um, I wanted to add detail to my work. And I usually worked in, in acrylics, so I could take it pretty far. Now, when I got older and I was working at the museum, I couldn't do watercolors because it, it just, I didn't know how to handle them and make detail and do the things I could do now. Um, with acrylics, I could do pretty much everything. Because if I made a mistake, I could paint over. Watercolors is a whole different thing. But now I, I've kind of developed these different type uh, techniques I'm sharing. Because there are some people that want to do something a little different from what a lot of people are doing. And it's that finish uh, a painting in a half hour. Uh, and it's real fast and loose, and sometimes it's just one stroke. And I do use that technique. You can see that's part of that technique right here. But I also like to go in there and add detail. So this is kind of one of those things that's kind of real loose, like the way people generally paint with watercolors. And then this is kind of a, like a medium type um, detail thing. So I'm kind of putting some little details in here. Um, and some highlights, and that's kind of a medium type of detail. Um, if you have seen some of my other vi videos, you realize I can I can go into detail with watercolors. And like I said in previous uh, videos, I wanted to know how to do detail on watercolors, but there was nobody demonstrating detail back then. And um, So I just developed this on my own. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop there. You can see, see the highlights. It just you can see the separation now of that little highlight from the clouds. So now this is definitely in way in front instead of on the same plane as the clouds. Anyway, 